Hello. We are here to tell you about heterogeneous computing and the heterogeneous system architecture. Traditionally, computers use the CPU to process applications and step-by-step -step tasks. The CPU is great for handling complex decisions in order and one after another. Computers often also use a GPU, which is great for graphics processing and handles large blocks of data done in parallel. However, in an effort to meet the extreme demands of modern computing, engineers started harnessing the power of the GPU for parallel CPU tasks. That is the fundamental idea of heterogeneous computing. Heterogeneous computing refers to systems that use more than one kind of processor. Most often, it is a combination of using both the CPU and GPU. An open standards technology called Heterogeneous Systems Architecture, or HSA for short, allows for the CPU and GPU combinations to happen. Heterogeneous computing is important and has many benefits over traditional homogeneous computing. The GPU and CPU share the same chip, often resulting in better battery life, lower cost, and smaller design than the traditional separate CPU and GPU systems. This combined CPU and GPU chip is called an accelerated processing unit. AMD often uses the term APU when marketing their heterogeneous processors. However, Intel does not use the term APU and prefers to stick with the CPU term. We hope that after this video you will learn the fundamental idea of heterogeneous computing and how it may or may not suit your computing needs for your next processor purchase. As we have learned in CIS 451, the CPU design has become more complex over time to meet the high demands from users. As you can see from the graph, there are three distinct PC eras that we have seen. The first is a single core era that we are all familiar with. All CPUs were originally single core and was constrained by power and complexity. Then it evolved into the multi-core era. Multiple CPUs are on the chip and by the end of 2010, nearly all new desktop computers had multi-core processors. However, that is constrained by power, software that takes advantage of the cores, and scalability. It is believed that we are now approaching a new era, the heterogeneous system era. The constraint for this era is the new programming models that many are not familiar with yet. Heterogeneous computing can be found today in many popular systems. Intel's Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, and Haswell CPUs that have HD graphics are all heterogeneous. AMD's APUs take advantage of heterogeneous computing as well. It is in many smartphones and laptops today. Even gaming consoles such as the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One all take advantage of this CPU and GPU computational combination. Now we will look at some of the details of a GPU. GPU technology originated from the need to improve the performance of computer games and graphics applications, and for a long time it wasn't widely accessible for scientific computing. The GPU is highly specialized in number crunching and excels at a lot of smaller, individual tasks at the same time. This is needed for graphics processing that can involve millions, if not billions, of calculations per second. Typically, high-end graphics cards have hundreds of cores to help accomplish this. These cores are, are called shaders and operate simultaneously. This makes GPUs ideally suited for computing tasks that deal with a very large data set and intense numerical computations. These GPU processors are now being used for typical CPU computations and can dramatically improve performance for applications that need this parallel processing. Things like spreadsheets, databases, cryptography, gesture recognition, and much more are sped up by the GPU's specialized parallel processing. The GPU technology is revolutionizing the way we think about parallel computing and the way we write parallel applications. The Heterogeneous System Architecture, or HSA, is an open standards technology that allows the CPU to combine the resources of the GPU for tasks. HSA design intends to make it easier for the programmer to interact with the GPU and the CPU. 
For example, sending data from one to another is as simple as sending a pointer. In 2012, the HSA Foundation, or HSAF, was formed to help unify the computing industry around one HSA approach. There are many well-known brands that help start the foundation, including AMD, ARM, and Qualcomm. The foundation aims to help system designers integrate different kinds of computing elements, often the CPU and GPU, in a way that eliminates the inefficiencies of sharing data and sending work items between them. They created a low-level interface layer called HSA Intermediate Language. This layer is a virtual machine and frees a programmer from having to tailor a program to specific hardware. With HSA, it makes it easier for programmers to transition to heter heterogeneous computing and adapt their algorithm to use either the CPU or GPU for better performance. One of the negatives with heterogeneous computing is the new software design needed to take advantage of it. Traditional software designs will run on it, however, it will not take full advantage of the GPU for certain CPU tasks. We will give you a brief overview of some of the most common technologies to help program for heterogeneous systems, OpenCL, CUDA, and HUMA. The first way to program for such a system is by using OpenCL. OpenCL is a framework used for heterogeneous systems. It was initially developed by Apple and is now an open standard and royalty free. It allows programmers to use their existing source code and target the CPU or GPU when needed. This allows for the programmer to adapt their algorithms to take advantage of the GPU for computation. OpenCL is cross-platform and is based on C99. It is often considered the industry standard for heterogeneous computing and has been adopted by Apple, Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, and many more. Another common way to do heterogeneous computation is with NVIDIA's CUDA. CUDA is a parallel computing platform and programming model invented by NVIDIA. The platform contains libraries, compilers, and extensions to C++, C, C++ and Fortran languages. The platform is free, but it is proprietary and limited to only NVIDIA hardware. A few months ago, AMD announced a new and exciting advancement called Heterogeneous Uniform Memory Access, or HUMA. HUMA is a shared memory architecture used in APUs. In the traditional system architecture of separate CPU and GPUs in a system, each have their own pool of memory. To do computation on the GPU, the data has to be copied from the system memory to the GPU's memory, and when work is done, copied back to the system's memory. This adds to the total time and negates the value of doing computation on the GPU. In most HSA implementations, the GPU and CPU have separate slices of system memory to work with. The GPU can see and access the same data memory as the CPU, However, the CPU and GPU can't work together on the same data. It still needs to be copied over. HUMA fixes this. The CPU and GPU share one piece of memory together. This allows for the GPU and CPU to work on the exact same data. They use the same pointers to access the same memory for reading and writing. They are cache coherent, so they can work on the, on the data at the same time without issues, as they both see up-to-date views of the data. This results in the GPU and CPU working together much more efficiently. Writing applications that take advantage of this specialized computation is also easier with HUMA. Developers do not have to worry about copying data, synchronizations, and address translations. One can just send a pointer to the GPU and send the result to the CPU using that same exact pointer. With HUMA, there will be support for mainstream programming languages, including Python, C++, and Java. Now we will lay out the pros and cons of heterogeneous computing. The pros are that it provides a great parallel processing power in a smaller, more efficient package. Traditionally, the CPU does computations and the GPU is a separate processor that does other computations. Putting them both on the same chip saves space and also often lowers costs. 
Battery life is often improved and is the reason why APUs are seen in many mobile devices. When doing GPU related tasks, you can call upon a single processor instead of both the CPU and GPU when they are separate processors, saving battery life. Another good thing is that certain applications can benefit greatly from using the parallel processing power of the GPU instead of the CPU. For example, spreadsheets, databases, and gesture recognition all benefit from the GPU processing. There are some cons to doing heterogeneous computing. Due to the physical limitations of the chip sizes, a good CPU combined with a good discrete graphics card can often outperform an APU. However, APUs can be combined with certain types of discrete graphics cards to improve performance. This is why APUs are currently recommended for mobile devices, laptops, and lower-end desktops where battery life is more of a concern than pure power. Another con is that new software design models to take full advantage of the heterogeneous components. Many programmers use to thinking sequentially and will have to adapt to think of a parallel programming techniques. GPUs have evolved to the point where many real-world applications are easily implemented on them and run significantly faster than on multi-core systems. Future computing architectures will be hybrid systems with parallel core GPUs working in tandem with multi-core CPUs. That is a quote from Jack Dongara, a professor at the University of Tennessee. Currently, heterogeneous computing is used in many applications. One example is that it is being used to identify hidden plaque and arteries. Harvard Engineering, Harvard Medical School, and Brigham Women's Hospital have teamed up to use heterogeneous computing to take advantage of GPUs to simulate blood flow to identify hidden artery plaque without invasive imaging techniques or exploratory surgeries. It is believed that we are approaching a new era, the heterogeneous system era. With the heterogeneous system architecture, the design and software implementation for different types of processors on a single chip is made possible. The CPU is great for handling complex decisions in order and one after the other. The GPU is highly specialized in number crunching and excels a lot of smaller individual tasks at the same time. With the heterogeneous system architecture, programmers can utilize either the CPU or the GPU to maximize the performance of certain types of tasks. HSA Foundation has, was recently created to help standardize the heterogeneous computing for the future. With their efforts, programming for heterogeneous systems is easier. OpenCL is an open framework and is the standard for heterogeneous system programming. NVIDIA CUDA is their proprietary system to also help programmers write applications to take advantage of the GPU and CPU when desired. AMD's HUMA is unified memory between the different types of processors and will ultimately make the parallel programming easier. Both the software and hardware in heterogeneous systems will help for parallel computing, lower costs, and improve battery life. Although programmers will have to adapt to new software models for taking advantage of using different types of processors in a single chip. Heterogeneous computing is already used in many applications today and many believe that it will be the future standard of computing.